Hello, I'm going to tell you about the fundamental theorem of algebra, which says if you have a polynomial with real coefficients, then every root of that polynomial is in the complex numbers. And let me just give you an overview of how the proof is going to go, and then we'll go into the details. So, um, we're going to suppose that we have a root of g alpha with alpha not in the complex numbers. So we're going to go by contradiction. And then we're going to look at this extension, uh, an extension here, where this is a root field, or splitting field, it's also known as, of G. So we're going to be looking at uh, a stack of fields like this. Um, we're going to have the Galois group, remember by the Galois correspondence. We're going to have G equal to the Galois group of E over R. And this, this extension will be Galois because we have a splitting field, so it's going to be normal. And also we're in characteristic zero, so it's separable. So we have a Galois extension. And then we're going to get some sort of subgroup here corresponding to C, and we won't give that name. So this is the basic setup. We're going to look at it like this. And kind of we're going to go in a couple steps here. First of all, we're going to prove that g, uh, the order of g is equal to 2 to the a for some a. And the way we're going to do, that, do this is we're going to use zero theory. So we're going to look at a zero 2 subgroup, and we're going to look at its fixed field, and we're going to show that the fixed field is equal to r. And that will be enough to prove that the Galois group has two power order. And from there, uh, from there, we can do a little bit more. Now that we have to know that it's two group, um, we can look at a subgroup of G, and the subgroup we're going to call H, and that's going to be defined to be the Galois group. Uh, it's not writing. The Galois group of E over C. And notice that that's, that H is a subgroup of G. G is a Galois group of E over R, and so a Galois group E over C is going to be a subgroup. And then that means that this is going to have two power order. The order of H is going to be, I don't know, equal to 2 to the B. And then what we're going to be able to do, we're going to use a little bit of knowledge of, of P groups, that is, groups of a prime power order, to say that we can find... find that we can get a subgroup of index 2. Alright, so now we're at a place where we can actually get uh, the real contradiction that we need, because what we have is, uh, oh, I suppose this corresponds to H. Um, I can draw that in. Now what we have is we have H, we have subgroup H of M, M of H I mean, and so that corresponds to some sort of a field F over here by the Galois correspondence again. So I have a big E, the root field, corresponds to the identity. We have R corresponds to the entire Galois group. C, is going to, C corresponds to H. And this F is going to correspond to M. But this has index 2, which means that this is going to be a degree 2 field extension, which means that F is going to equal to C join gamma, um, and it's degree 2, so that means that gamma uh, is going to be the root of some ax squared plus bx plus c. Oh, but we can use a quadratic formula to get that gamma is equal to negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a, but this is going to be contradiction. Because here we have a degree 2 field extension, uh, and the field extension, you, you take C and then you join to gamma. But then, if you look at this, the complex numbers are closer to square roots. And so this basically means that gamma is in C. So now, so our contradiction is that both gamma is in C, but also, if you attach gamma to C, you get a degree 2 field extension. So, that's the outline, so we're going to get, it's kind of complicated, right? We're going to start off with alpha is not in C, and then we end up getting this other gamma, and that's what's going to get it for us, but, but we'll see, uh, but we'll be able to do it. 
So, let's look at the details. So, we have a polynomial G, alpha, like this, and we're going to suppose that alpha is not in the complex numbers. So, once again, uh, here's a quick diagram for right now. We can do something like this. This is going to correspond to the Galois correspondence. It's going to give me, I'll call this H because I'll call it that later, but we don't need it for now, like so. All right, well, I'm going to let S, oh, this G here is the Galois group of E over R. Okay, I'm going to let S be a Zillow 2 subgroup of G, and I'm going to end up showing that S is equal to all of, all of, all of G, but I'm going to let K, to begin with, as a step to proving that, be the fixed field of S, which sometimes, like in the book Pinter, you denote S star. So what do we have here? Somewhere over here we have a S. Um, oh, by the way, this means that uh, if the order of G is 2 to the a m, where m is odd, it means that the degree of s is equal to 2 to the a. Uh, so this is, you need to use uh, the Zillow theories to, to get this. In some sense, right, Lagrange's theorem says that if you have a subgroup, then the order of the subgroup divides the order of the group. So the, the Zillow theory is, is uh, the, the main Zillow theorem is a partial, contra or pa partial uh, converse. If you have a prime power that divides the order of G and 2 to the A does, then you get a subgroup. So that's what I'm using here. That's the Zillow theory, the theorem that I'm using here is, is it's a partial converse of, of Lagrange's theorem. So I'm guaranteed that such an S exists. Whereas I'm not guaranteed that if 6 divides the order of the group that I get a subgroup for 6 because 6 is not a prime power. But I'm good here. That means in my group I have S here. And by the Galois correspondence, that's going to match up with this K here. So what do I know? Uh, I'm going to let beta belong to K. So my beta is in here. I'm going to prove that beta is in R. And the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to let, how about H of X equal the minimal polynomial so in particular it's irreducible over R of beta. Well, what do I know? I know that the degree of H is equal to uh, K over R. And actually, uh, that, that's, that's not quite true. Let me just uh, walk that back a second. Uh, I just made a mistake there. This is equal to uh, R adjoined beta over R. And so here's R adjoined beta. Uh, and you can see that R adjoined beta is going to divide the degree of K over R because it's tough to tell. Here we have k, and so we get, maybe I'll draw it over here. This is all we care about right now. Here we have k, here we have r joined beta, and here we have r. All right, so this is why this degree is going to divide this degree. That's what I'm saying. But by Galois correspondence, here's k over the degree of k over r here is equal to this index. And so this index here, it's g over s, which equals the order of g over the order of s, which equals 2am over 2a, which equals m. And I said that m is odd. So this is equal to odd. So in particular, the degree of this, of this minimal polynomial has to divide an odd number. So the degree here is odd. So we have an odd polynomial. But what do we know about odd polynomials? If 
I take the limit as, right, this is monic, so it's like x to the something, uh, positive x to the something. If it has odd degree, if it's like x to the fifth, as x goes to infinity, my polynomial goes to infinity. As x goes to negative infinity, goes to negative infinity. So I guess something looks like this, and I don't really know what happens there. But you can tell by the, essentially the intermediate value theorem that I have to have a root somewhere in here. The way I drew it, I have a root there. So I have h of x has a root in r. So I get h of x is equal to x minus r times maybe h star of x. But look at this, h is irreducible. So if I can factor h, uh, I can only do so trivially. That means that one of these has to be a scalar, it has to be a real number. And this clearly isn't, so that must be it. And so our conclusion is that h of x just equals x minus r. But in fact, I know that beta is a root. So this, I really just figure out that h of x uh, equals x minus beta. But it's a minimal polynomial of r, so I know that it's an element of r joined x. But this implies that beta uh, belongs to r. So what do we do? I let beta be in this k, where k is the fixed field of a zero 2 subgroup. And I end up with, oh, it, if the zero 2 subgroup fixes an element, that means the element has to be in the real numbers. So, um, so s, k, which is equal to the fixed field, of my zero 2 subgroup S is equal to R. So look over here to the Galois correspondence. I get that K over R, this part right here, is going to equal to the index of G over S. But I know that this is 1 because I know they're the same field. That's what I just proved. If, K's, if beta's in K, then beta's in R. And the index here, order of g divided by order of, a, order of s equals 1, that means that g has to equal s. And in fact, I get that the order of g equals 2 to the a. That's my big conclusion here, is that, is that the only prime that divides g has to be 2. So that was part of the outline, right? I did that. So now we're going to move on. So I know that the order of g is equal to 2 to the a, where g is the Galois group. And so maybe I'll just draw my picture one more time. So here I have a root field of my polynomial g. Of g. And then I'm going to have complex numbers, then I'm going to have the real numbers. That corresponds by the Galois correspondence to G. And then I'm going to call this H in here. Right? G is going to be the Galois group of E over R. And H is going to be a subgroup. It's all the automorphisms of E that fix C. But I get that H is a subgroup of G. And I get the order of g equals 2 to the a. By Lagrange's theorem, that means the order of h has to divide the order of g, which means I can conclude that the order of h is equal to, I don't know, 2 to the b for some b. So in particular, what I get to do is I get to use some knowledge, some basic knowledge of p groups. Uh, and in particular, it says that there's a subgroup m in h such that The index of M and H is equal to 2. So let's just fix this a little bit. That means that I can adjust this picture by putting an M here, and that index is 2. And then I can look at its fixed field, and I'll call that F. So what I can do is, uh, by Galois correspondence, that's 2, that's 2. So I get the f 
is equal to C gamma, um, where the min polynomial of, I'm going to call this Q of X, min polynomial over C of gamma is, is a quadratic. And now we've already seen the ending. That means I can use a quadratic formula. And we're going to get a problem. And that's good. So I know that elements of the complex numbers and the real numbers, uh, and, and I'm just using the, this fact from analysis. Back here, right? I use the fact that every polynomial of odd degree is going to have a real root. That's an analysis fact that I need. I also need that uh, square that the complex numbers are closer to square roots. So that means that this thing is just a bunch of sums, products, quotients, differences, and square roots of C. That means that gamma is in C. So what we get is f f, which equals C adjoined gamma equals C because gamma is already in there, but we also have F over C equals 2. That's a contradiction. Would it contradict? Well, everything on this page is fine. Well, everything on this page is fine. Here's the problem. It contradicted the fact that we suppose we had a root that the alpha is not in C. That means that for any polynomial g, every root has to be in C or else we get a contradiction. And that's the fundamental theorem of algebra, and now we're done. Thank you.